Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another lesson. And this is not going to be a drawing lesson per se. This is just something I wanted to show you guys. This came in the mail today and I took a look at a couple of the pages. And I haven't seen the whole thing yet, but I'm going to kind of show you not the whole thing, but but a lot of it. So this is the original pages by John Byrne. Uh, now, let, let me let me pause right there. It's not the original, like the hand drawn pages. He sent them to me. These are scans of the original pages before they did all the cleanup. So you can see all the little things that, that took place in the drawing. Now, I got this off of Amazon. This is 117. And John Byrne, if you don't know John Byrne, John Byrne was like the Jim Lee back in the day. John was the one that got me drawing. I saw his art and I started drawing because of him. Jim Lee is the one that kept me drawing. So when I saw this, I had to get it mainly because my style was kind of based on this. But if anything, I could say to myself that I am not the best in inking. And John Byrne, his drawings compared to the drawings today, he used more form and shape than the artists today but his form and shape had the right curves to make this stuff look powerful and, and right. You know, he was like a, a master at doing that. Nowadays, we'd have like every ab and every rib and the veins in the arms. But back then, John just knew what he was doing. And his inking, this is how I learned to ink, by his, the way he did his um, feathering and his hatching. And, but I didn't understand the actual way to do it so i said i want to get this book so i can learn uh just and just see close up because you know comic books are just you know they're small and you really can't see the detail and when they put the color in there it takes away from a lot but this is like the original pages and you'll see in a second what i mean but i mean if you take a look at like his inking i mean it's simple but it works because he does his feathering you know all out and when i used to do feathering I would just go in the same direction all the way across the body. I didn't know you had to go up across to make the, the form look round. So I, look, I think I looked at maybe about 12 pages, give or take. So I'm just going to flash it this real quick. As I say, this is on Amazon and I have the Jim Lee X-Men coming. I think it's going to be here in a few days. So like I said, I'll go through this real quick. I don't want to read anything. So as I'm saying, these are the actual pages that were scanned and in a lot of them you have the um you can see like the blue lines for corrections you have the actual notations on some of these of of what to do and so forth but the actual inking is what i wanted this for to just see how his inking style is so i'm just going to flip through and it's not like okay this is um book what is this Issue 108, you know, page one through three, four, five, it's just, it skips. Maybe he sold some of the pages or maybe somebody kept some of the pages or maybe some of the pages were just lost in time or messed up or something. I don't know, but it, like I say, it's the inking style that I wanted compared to like Jim Lee's and what is his name? Scott Williams. You know, I, I know I'll never be able to ink like that, but I can ink like this. So this will give me some good direction, like check the hand out of the way he feathered the hand and then do a little cross hatching in some areas here. So let me just flip through a few more pages. And then I say his, his bodies, his body styles were very simple. Uh, if we did a female today, her arm would have, she'd have more definition in her arm. Uh, it'd be more cut, but like Wolverine, you don't see any abs, but he's muscular. He's big and he's muscular. And this is when Wolverine was short. I think it was five five something so which is the size he's supposed to be he's not six feet tall or whatever he's just short uh thick and a fighter and that's why when they called him the wolverine he was small a wolverine is a vicious small animal but let me just check out some of this and i had these books i don't know if i still have them i know i sold a lot of my x-men books uh, over time, but I still have like four boxes of comic books, which are just sitting and I said I need to sell them or just give them away because I know eventually they're going to turn yellow.
But the, you know, his women, you know, the just the basic shapes, as I said, you know, just the muscles. The only thing that really got me is when that that kind of I don't want to say annoyed me, but when he does the chest, the chest just looks flat. It just it looks flat. Whereas today, everybody has those you know those balloon pecs. His chest were always flat with just some curve and contour to it, but his art was just incredible. And whatever he drew, whatever title he drew, would just take off. He, I think he, I don't want to say he started, but I know he did X Men, he did Superman, he did Batman. And one thing about Superman is when he took over, he realized Superman was too powerful, so he decided to redo Superman from the start, take his powers back down, and gradually bring him back up. Now I'm, I'm flipping through maybe like six or seven pages at a time. And this is 150 pages, by the way. It's, it's, it's a big book. Alpha Flight. I remember Alpha Flight. I used to love Alpha Flight. Let's see this, because I haven't got this far in the book, so that's a Spider-Man. I don't know if any more Spider-Man is in here. Oh, they color this one. And you see the difference? When you see the color, it kind of takes away from the inking. And this is why I wanted this the black and white books, because you can see where the hatching is. You can see where the darks are. You can see where the feathering goes. Uh, 117. It was 150, but it's 117.88. And I had a lot of points on um, Amazon, so I bought this one and the Jim Lee book, and I thought they were going to come together, but it didn't. Okay, again, Spider-Man. There's nothing in here in, in the center. There's really nothing in there, but you can tell he's muscular, and the way he does his, his feathering out is basic and simple, but it works really well. And then I can learn from some some of his panels when to do close-ups, when to do... I kind of know, but I mean, it's always good to learn from masters. Basically, I know, but it's always good to learn from masters. And one thing, he really did not do a lot of background in his, in his panels. You know, you'd have like one thing, like this one, you always have... If, if anybody moves from one place to the next place... You have to show where they are. So they have he had detail in here. He's coming in the window. No detail. I mean, yeah, no, no background. Just a little bit of background. No background. No background. A wall. A uh, wall in the door. Here we go again with just a little bit of that. So another thing that I liked about him, he didn't waste time with background. It was all right up in your face action. So let me grab just some more pages. And I had all these books because everything John Byrne did, I would collect. Same with Jim Lee. When he first came on the scene, every book he did, I had a Jim Lee book. But I remember the X-Men. I had the very first X-Men. It wasn't done by Jim Lee. I ended up selling it, which I'm kind of like upset that I did that now. But, you know, money talked back in the day. But I do believe I had the first X-Men that Jim Lee did, X-Men that Jim Lee did. You guys just white out right here. He whited it out. I don't know if you can see that as good as I can see that, but I got my camera pulled back so I, you can take in the whole book. And I think that's a red pencil. They say that this was scanned in color so that you can see all the like the blue lines and the, the white out and so forth, which I like that. Because it shows you that, you know, even professionals make mistakes and have to touch up here and there. I remember this book. Kind of one of my favorite books. But I hated the fact that he started putting eyes in Wolverine. I hated that. And I think he did that with Batman for a time, too. Had the little eyes in there. But I love, this is when I kind of fell in love with the whole reverse shadow concept. And a lot of my characters back then were based on this. And I don't know if I say, I think John Byrne came around the late 70s, 
mid 80s hellfire club dark phoenix yes yeah, this is when she died i think she died or oh, they took the phoenix out as i said i had all these books i don't know if i still have them i may have because i don't think i would have sold my john burns nice splash page Oh, she went on trial. I remember this. Jean Grey was the Phoenix. I think they got rid of her, but they put her on trial. And uh, yeah, she put her old suit back on. So let me grab a few more pages. Keep this short. But as I say, I'm going to mimic his inking style. As I say, I can ink, but... Yeah, I'm not, what do I say? I'm not really sure. I know where light hits. I know where it will be shadows. But just feathering like that or hatching like that, it's like, should I hatch this or feather this? Yeah, so studying this, and then when Jim Lee book comes, I'll show you a quick of that as well. You see, he when he did detail, he did a lot of detail. But most of the time... There wasn't a lot of detail in his in his um, stories or his panels because he did a lot of close-ups. Wendigo. And some of these pages are more yellow than the others, so. I don't know if it's older. This is issue 140, page 30, page 31. Issue 141, page 6, page 10. So there's not like the whole book. They're just pages that I guess they, like I said, maybe they, they had laying around or they could find or whatever. I don't know why he would sign it. I know it's a couple of them he signed. I, I don't know. Maybe this is a page he gave away or something. Because this Terry, I don't know who that is. Terry Austin signed it too. I think he might have been the inker, maybe. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Pencil to John Barr. Yeah, inker. Terry Austin. So, I want to wrap this up. But, I want to compare, like, his like the way he hatches like me for me i'm looking through this book here if you see this i don't i i do very little feathering and hatching when i do my books because i'm afraid if i go too far you can't really change that so i, I leave a lot of it up to color even with his is the side of his face i did very little hatching and so forth but I'm going to do more inking. I'm going to concentrate into doing more inking. And this is a poster from the Animal Corp. So if you follow me, you know I had this up on Kickstarter. It didn't really go through. No, it didn't go through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up on Amazon. And I'll let you guys know when it goes up there. And I'm going to add, actually add 10 extra pages to the book. Uh, and... I did mini posters, so those are going to be some of the, the pages I drew and I colored the mini posters, plus some fan art and um, some pages for the next story. Just a couple, you know, not finished um, story pages. So that's going to be up on Amazon maybe in a week or so, give or take. So let's get to the end of this book, just so you guys can see a little more John Byrne. And Wolverine was very hairy, too. That was the thing that they, they, they don't put that in there anymore. He was, like, extremely hairy. Like that. I think I don't think I've ever seen that. That must have been just, a, like, a pinup or something or something. So that's going to be it, and I'll get back with you guys. I guess these are covers. As I said, I've not, I've not looked. 35 cents. Still only 35 cents. How much does a book cost today? How much? That was back in the day. I yeah, I was thirty five cent was a lot of money for a kid though. <laughs> so these are the covers. 
As I said, I'm going to take all of this in consideration. 40 cents. So we're going up now. Five cents back in the day. So, yeah. Like I said, it was the pinup for the cover. I remember this one, too. And I, the way, this is how I got my my shape. Because he would, his all his men had to just straight down. Their waist was straight down. Uh, now I draw it with a little bit of, of um, obliques. But all of his people were like, his men went straight down. Let me see if I can find somebody that's standing real quick. Of course not because, okay, Wolverine, straight down. He, he gave you the lats and then everything else went straight down. And as I said, he was the one. Oh, okay, I didn't see this. He was the one that got me started in drawing, and I gave up for a while, and Jim Lee was the one that um, got me back into comics. As I said, he always made it straight down, and then he had this upside down shape, which later on, I recognized it as a house upside down when I was learning to draw. But yeah, I love his stuff. I love his stuff. And on this beautiful page, we're going to go ahead and end this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.